one thing I saw on the internet was a go, he tipped it towards the spark to get some fuel going and he said it made it a one start, one pull wonder. I don't think that's going to happen to you. So. Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video we're going to take a look at this really old hater lawnmower I've won on eBay. I've actually won this for £20 and it's going to come in a minute, someone's going to drop this off for me, leave it on my front grass because we're still in the middle of this awful pandemic. So I've not been going out and picking mowers up from people's houses, someone very local is going to drop it off on the way past and for another fiver they're going to bring me another lawnmower that's got a hole in the deck so I think it's been stood for around 20 years so let's um, let's get it in the back garden, let's have a look at it and let's see if we can get this running. should be a real challenge this and I just couldn't... Um, I couldn't let it pass me by, so we're going to have a look at this lawnmower right now. So, I've um, given my garage a bit of a tidy up, it's freezing cold, January, tumble dry is on again. Um, I'm just waiting for this mower to turn up, so I've had a bit of a tidy up, we can see everything's looking fairly tidy. So hopefully this year I might get to do a few more mowers, as, as you probably know, I've been a bit quiet recently, but I'm not really wanting to go up to people's houses and pick lawnmowers up when you shouldn't be going out, I'm a bit of a believer in... Uh, kind of doing as you're told really and trying to not pass on this horrible virus we're all trying to get rid of so that's where I am with stuff, I've had a bit of a tidy round and I'm just waiting for someone to come and um, drop this off, I'm quite excited actually so I've just watched a video on uh, YouTube, I think it was Donny Boy and he showed you a few things about these chokomatic carbs um, uh, really if they, they don't kind of shut on their own when you actually take the air filter off you can see inside them then you can have problems so it should be here in a minute and we'll take a look at it. I have actually filmed a few videos just on my other channel which is called Stampy's Random Reviews and Tutorials. I've done a few on the, the cars I've got out there. I've got a couple of focuses where the heated front screens weren't working. So in the top right hand corner you'll see a link to that channel. You can watch the, the videos that I've done. I've done a few different ones recently. If you could subscribe over there that would uh, help me out a lot. So when I'm not doing the mowers I've been doing a few other little videos as well and I've been writing some websites. I've been very busy um, doing other things that basically don't involve me um, going around to other people's houses and kind of having to just um, put myself at risk and my family at risk and things like that. So I have been busy, everything's been fine. I know I get loads of comments asking where have you been and are you still doing the more videos and stuff. And yeah, well, I'll do them as and when I can do them. But um, a lot of the time I'm just very busy. It's not um, a full-time thing that I do, it's just a part-time thing. But I do enjoy filming the vids. I enjoy um, doing the repairs as well and sharing everything along with all you subscribers which is, um, if I looked the other day and I couldn't believe it, I was actually at 16,000 and to say I've not really put a vid on for a while it's um, really good of you all to kind of stick along with me so I do the videos as and when I can for anybody who's um, going to ask that in the comments I've not gone away, I'm not planning on not doing any more I probably will just do one now and again whenever I get the chance and just while I'm waiting I just want to do a shout out to Aaron Rooney who's like a super fan of the channel recently uh, had a few email conversations backwards and forwards and Aaron basically watches a lot of my videos and I sent Aaron the last couple of DVDs they actually uh, had in my drawer at home don't sell those anymore by the way I get a few emails asking me if I still sell the DVDs we don't do that anymore so all the videos you kind of need are here on uh, are here on YouTube but Aaron Rooney messaged me saying how much he enjoyed the videos so what I've done is I've sent him the last couple of DVDs I had as he, uh, he really wanted one and I also sent him my Moa Man t-shirt just for being a super fan as well so Quick shout out to Aaron, I really appreciate you watching buddy, thanks a lot. It's here now, someone's just dropping it off now. Right, let's go see what we've been um, had delivered. It's quite exciting isn't it, it's like Christmas Eve, I don't know what you're going to get here, so let's go and have a look, just drop these off, so purposely kept out of the way, let's see what we've got for £25. Oh yeah, we've got a champion, this has got a hole in the deck apparently, and here it is look, look at this one, here to Harry got a hole in but it's got old bits on it it's got the carb on it and the pull cord and everything so that's pretty good for bits for a fiver and this is the uh, the task that we've got is to see if we can get this old hater mower running again so let's get started right let's have a quick look at what we've bought I think this looks like it's a, a hater harrier I didn't know if it was one of them haterettes I think they're aluminium these so they don't ever rust which is probably why it's so old I'd love to find a date on it as well, I'm not sure where the date stamp might be. If anyone knows where to look and I don't find it in the video, leave a comment for me and I'll have a quick look. But apparently this hasn't been run for a lot of years. And that cable still works, that's always a good thing. I hate it when cables don't work. It's really expensive, so that all works and moves about. No pull cord. Obviously, I can't try this. It's not going to have any oil left in it, I would have thought. Might all be rock hard, so let's just give this a bit of a tip over. Oh, 
look at all that, look. All rust and stuff just drops off it or whatever it is. But we can't be rust, can it? And it's got a normal blade on bottom, but um, yeah, looks pretty even. It's not uh, touching the deck at either end. So, yeah, let's have a quick look. This is the other one I paid a fiver for, and it's uh, well worth a fiver for, for bits, is this pull cord starter, air filter. You'll have all the governor springs under here. Primer bulb looks alright. Spark plug lead, ignition, a um, few other bits. Even got a grass box there, which might come in useful. The deck's definitely uh, had it. I won't be repairing that, that's for sure. Yeah, the exhaust guards snapped off here and stuff, but it's okay. It's uh, it's worth a fiver. Probably got the blade underneath and the uh, blade adapter. So what I want to do with this is I want to take a look at the choke on here. I want to see if it's got a chokematic carbon, which is similar. These are similar set up to the, the ones we normally do on the Briggs Classic so they've got a different diaphragm and gasket in and if I can't get this this actual serviced up and running with this carbon what my plan is to try and do which I don't know if it'll work is to swap it for another carb like this and see if it fits now I think there'll be some differences but I thought out of the two mowers I could maybe at least get this one running because when something's not been sat for something's not been run rather for a long time around sort of 20 years I don't know what it is about me, but it's quite exciting if you can get it running again. I don't know why, but um, let's first of all take this air filter off if we can get it off. It looks like rust's taken over. I just want to see what type of carburetor it's got on it. Right, it's really, really cold out today. It's one of those days when, you know, it's going to be like minus three, four at night. And you get your cars and everything's iced over in the morning, so my hands are freezing. Let's take a look in here. Oh, it is, yeah. Can you see this butterfly valve in here? Ah, that's great. That's what I wanted to see. Let me just show you something close up. A lot of the problems with these, these are chokomatic carbs on here. If the diaphragm's gone, it has a spring in that runs up the side of here. And I'll show you all this. I'm going to take it apart and show you exactly um, kind of how it all works. But you see, when you open it, it should automatically, don't open it too far, it should go back like that and lay down flat so the idea is it chokes itself so obviously when it's closed like that you've got the automatic choke and as you get running it opens up but a lot of these when the diaphragm's gone they'll stick open and or they'll stick closed but what I wanted to check was that moves and I can't believe after all that time that that actually does that so that opens and closes which is a great start which means I can probably get away with using the, the diaphragm that's in it so that's all alright let's just see here if this all moves about Check all these kind of springs and stuff move. Let's just move this throttle at the top and see what moves. Yeah, so all the springs and stuff's moving. I'm not sure what's going on in there. I'm pretty sure that that, I'm pretty sure that this part here should move about a little bit. And it does a bit, so I think what we'll do to start with is we'll take off this recoil cover because there's no pull cord in it anyway. We'll have a look around and just fit a pull cord in there. Let's have a quick look in this fuel tank as well. We're going to make, need to make sure there's some oil in here as well. So, oh, there's a little bit of what looks like gold, golden petrol at the bottom, but there's not, obviously not much left in it, but it don't look, um, it's not full of dirt or rust either, so that's good. Um, we're going to need to make sure there's some oil in this before we try and do anything with it as well. And the oil, you see, it's, it's hidden around the back of here. Be good if I could get that open. Just open that off. Not if it's got a screwdriver hole in here, you can normally put your screwdriver in and undo it. But I might have to get another tool actually just to get in there and open that up. But I'm definitely going to want, need to change the oil on this. So I'm going to tap that round with something. We'll do that. But let's start with this uh, starter recoil. Right. Let's see if we can get this recoil off. Let's see if I've got the right one. Oh look, I've got a ten and it's not big enough. Up. I bet that's a different size. The problem with 12 C's are, we'll find out in a second, but I'm going to get the right tool and we'll take that off. Let's put this off here. Take that one over there. I should pull this spark plug lead off early, shouldn't I? Even though there's absolutely no chance of it starting. Just for good measure, always take them off. I'll take that off as well. And that's out. Put that in my pocket. Yeah, we'll have to undo this lead at the, the front as well. The actual cable wants undoing at the front here, so we'll take that off. 
can probably do that now actually. See around here. What I need to do really with this first of all is just give it a bit of a clean off because obviously I'm going to have to take this whole thing apart so it doesn't really matter if it gets any water in the carb and stuff I'm going to be taking it all to bits so once I've got this off I think I'll just put this old air filter cover back on we'll just give this a clean off I'm probably going to take this one in the garage and we'll strip this down in the garage and take a look but that's off see all the dirt dropping out of it and the whole thing's a real mess we've got the um, ignition coil here can you see this here? Oh, everything's seized. This is a. Uh, this is all supposed to move. This governor flap assembly, and the whole thing's just completely seized. It shouldn't be like that. It should move, which is why when I moved this part before, nothing moved about. So we're going to have to take this in the garage, put it on the bench. I think once we've cleaned this off a little bit, we'll have a look at stripping this down, setting up this ignition coil, servicing this original car, and see if we can get that running. Clean out the fuel tank. Do what we can, put a plug in it and put it back, put some oil in it and see if we can get it running. So a bit of a a bit of a task. It's actually a sticker on the back here. I say a sticker, it's like a metal tab. It's got some numbers on it, but I don't know what they mean. So I'm gonna clean this off a bit, then I'm gonna take it in the garage, we'll strip this down, we'll see if we can get this serviced and get it running, which would be pretty much um, looking at the minute, pretty much of a miracle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pressure washer on this, I'm just gonna blast all this. It's all just gone kind of even mouldy, hasn't it? It's like white mould and you can tell it's been sat. They reckon it's been sat there 20 years and I can't disagree. Looking at that, I don't think that's moved at all in at least the last 10, 15 years. So I'm going to blast this off with a pressure washer, get it as clean as I can, take it in the garage. Right, so as you can see, I've just got this on the bench now. I need to check the oil in this before I do anything else. But one thing I don't know about these, I've not had one of these before, is the actual mechanism for the spring, for the rewind. Remember that, Craig David? Rewind? It's awful, wasn't it? Anyway, this appears to move a bit, and it's got this, I don't know, I guess it just drops on here, which is fine, that's all. I don't actually know if this is working or if there's any parts missing, but it's really not, not happy. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to go out now for a game of football with my kids, even though it's freezing. I'm going to spray this up with a good old WD-40. I'm going to leave this. I'm just going to get something around the back of here and hopefully it'll find its way somehow onto the springs. I'm going to come back to it. It might have just freed itself up a little bit. So hopefully that'll um, have everything I need to get this lawnmower going. Hopefully it'll, once I've got a pull cord in it, it'll rewind and move. Otherwise I'm really going to struggle, obviously, to test this mower. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to leave that with some WD-40 on it. Hopefully it'll find its way to the springs. I've got this on the bench, so I'm going to go out for a little bit, come back in a second, and we'll do a bit more work on this mower. Start by checking the oil here, we're going to strip down this carb. Right, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to take off this carb, we're going to strip all this down. I'm really kind of keen to, well, it did move a little bit there, find out why this is so stuck. I think it's just all rusted on. So we're going to take this governor flap off, we're going to take the carb off. First of all, I'm just going to film round. I'm going to take a few photographs on my phone so I can remember where all this goes. The little gap there between the coil and the flywheel looks okay. And everything looks to be um, there anyway. I don't look like anything's missing. All these little rubber boots are still on. And that's rock hard is that. So I'm going to film round here for anybody who's got one of these. And I'm going to take some photographs for myself just of where these linkages go. Because you can easily get confused with this. Once you've got it in bits thinking, did it go back in here? Did this go the other way around? Which way around did the linkage actually go? It's really, um, looks really simple before you take it apart, but always take yourself a few photographs first. So I'm gonna put the camera on the tripod and we'll start stripping this carb down. It's quite easy to take this off. It's just a couple of bolts, one here, one here, 
and this really should just pull off this uh, inlet manifold so let's have a go at doing that right so let's just unzip this from here see if I can get any of this impact let's go that one off that's the first one gone there see there look it's uh, just stuck in my socket so I'll take that off I'm going to keep hold of that I'm going to actually put that back on the mower in a minute and we're going to take this next one off as well so I'll just slide this tool off here just need a slightly bigger um, one of these look this is why I keep everything in my metal parts tray because I'm going to have to swap this look for one of these look I could just get a normal socket but since I've got this out I might as well just unzip it with this quite handy is this as well there was link to this in the uh, description of the videos as well the Ryobi 1 18 volt um, impact you can see how useful it can be so we've got those parts off to move them to one side for a second pull my uh, jumper out of the way before I get petrol on it got a new watch for Christmas Casio Illuminator a bit of a 80s uh, 80s watch lover really and I had a Casio for a well a good Casio for a few years so I've got that remove the spacer I kind of got it after watching Cobra Kai actually they don't see Cobra Kai on Netflix it's great and it kind of uh, there's a bit of reminiscing for the 80s in that a bit of a few flashbacks and stuff so um, I'm going to take a few photos of this before I just take this off here right okay I've got my photographs I'm happy now I nearly forgot I'm going to take this off I think it should be similar to the normal bridge ones we do unhook this linkage here and this is it straight away it's out of the way I could probably take the more off the bench now actually I could probably just work with this actual carb on the bench but before I do that I just want to take a quick look at this see how it's kind of starting to free up let's just back this off a bit I've had a little bit of a fiddle about with this off camera so it might be just because I've loosened it but what we ideally need this to do is not just move like this we actually need this to spring you can see how it's not kind of pulling back on its own I'm moving this it should do this on its own so I need to give this a bit of a good spring with a good old WD as well remember this hook goes on the bottom that actually links to the carb and I better just check on the back of here see if there's a couple of rubber washers see sat in here I don't know if there is I think there's maybe only one in there I'll have to have a good look at that when I've cleaned it off you want to make sure that you haven't actually left them on this inlet manifold as well or lost them down this gap here which sometimes happens so I'm going to spray this up I'm going to take it off I'm going to get this moving because until it moves freely this is never going to run it's never going to run right in this so I'm just going to try and free this up now without kind of taking anything else off and I, I want it to spring on its own now let's throw my tools around just, let's just back this off even further and I can't imagine anyone's been in here and kind of fiddled about with it all the springs are where they should be and everything so, and it needs to be tight but it should still spring about it should still be enough yeah you see it's starting to go on the spring and I just wonder if um, this is actually in the idle position now so if this actual mower was running here you could actually pull this bit here and this bit would move back if it moves like that you see how that goes the other way doesn't it let's have a look there so you go around that way I imagine that's at the maximum so still it doesn't really spring around much so I'm kind of now thinking is this the correct spring so I'm looking at the actual ends of the spring to see if they look like they've been damaged where well, someone's taken them off and fiddled about and to be honest they look perfect so it might just be a case of getting this thing freed up it doesn't move about as much as I would expect it to so that's something I'm definitely going to have to keep an eye on so I'm going to take that off there for now and then we'll have a look at this carb I just want to film something that I've just seen you see how this actual linkage is hooked on these springs here you can just see at this side around here where my finger is at the left hand side there how it's kind of poked through I don't know if that's correct I don't know if that's actually hooked through the wrong way which is stopping this to move as it should I can get it to move it's free but it isn't actually springing I just wonder if this has been hooked on kind of upside down so I'm going to unhook this probably have to going to put my uh, camera back on the tripod but I think I'm going to have to try and unhook this and I might even have to try and turn this over so this loop is actually on the bottom because I'm only guessing with this but that kind of looks wrong to me so I'm filming it close up for, for anybody else's benefit who's got one of these and also mine when I put it back together but that looks a little bit unusual 
The only reason I can think that it is correct is because the loop is at the top it's easier to attach the spring and the spring goes straight across. If it was underneath the spring would have to un attach underneath so for now I'm going to have to trust that, that that's correct. But that's definitely something that will, will stop a mower running incorrectly. I've only ever once seen one of these snaps and I don't know if somebody had done it. I think they must have had it apart but sometimes what will happen is especially if the, this is this is actually on in the reverse format this engine on this mower it faces with a plug facing the operator but what normally happens is when you can put the recoil cover on sometimes people use longer screws and they get stuck behind the governor flap and it can leave it open so when you put it back together you can't understand why it'll only run fast it's sometimes because you put a long screw in the actual engine cover and it stops the governor flap moving about but well, that seems to be freeing up okay for now so I'll tell you what we'll do before we do anything else is I'll undo this here I've undone this with some pliers earlier and we'll just take the oil out of here whatever's left in here is obviously going to be really black so we'll take the oil out of this mower All right so I've just um, I've just tipped the oil out of this lawnmower unfortunately I didn't press record but I just basically tipped the mower over and I got this out of it so I ain't got that on camera as you can see it's as black as you'd expect so I just tipped it over and I was just sort of saying on camera that these actual engines here where you fill these up I'm never completely sure how much oil to put in these so I normally have a look inside and fill it kind of half up the thread so if there's a right and a wrong way to actually do that please leave me a comment in the comments section because for years I've maybe been putting uh, too much oil or not enough in because there's nothing on this, there's no sort of dipstick on these it's just this tiny little uh, tiny little thread on here that you've got and that's all there is so we'll leave that I'll remember to put some in there before we uh, start this up, I'm going to lift this off the bench this is kind of starting to free up I'll lift this off the bench and we'll start with this carb and I'll show you what's inside there so we all like looking inside things don't we right so just giving this a bit of a spray up I'm just going to blow the rest of this dirt off here or most of this dirt off from my air compressor so I don't like all the dirt going back inside the carb once you've taken it apart so I'm just going to clean some of this off Right, so I've cleaned this off um, a little bit, it's not perfect but it's good enough. There's an adjustment screw here, so we're going to need to set this back up when we've taken this all apart. And I want to take this out so I can clean inside here, so apologies if you can see my breath in here. It's, um, it's quite late at night and it's cold. So what we need to do with this is work out what it's actually set at at the minute. So to do that I'm going to take this in as far as it'll go and we'll see what it is. So we've got half a turn, one one and a half well one and three quarters so to do it back we'll take it back a quarter then a half one one and a half that'll be where you adjust this so I'm going to take this right out of here because I want to get some carb spray in here and clean all this off so we're going to take that part off and put it in my uh, magnetic parts tray let's have a look here it's yeah it's about I can't remember what time it is it's not that late actually it's only about nine o'clock but um, feels late, it's one of those January nights when it feels late so and I want to get back in at 10 o'clock because Bullseye's on does anyone watch Bullseye? it's on challenge on uh, whatever um, council TV package I've got Bullseye's on at 10 o'clock which I like to watch from the 80s if you remember that I'm having a bit of a, an 80s thing at the minute so um, in fact I was watching Bullseye the other night and you, if you've ever seen it before they throw this basically these people from pub they throw darts at this dartboard and they answer questions and this guy hit this thing on the dartboard so he had, he had to answer a question on faces faces please Jim he said so Jim Bowen who was a presenter of Bullseye he said could you all look at your monitors and tell me who this famous person is so three contestants all looking at the monitors nobody could get it right and then in the end he said I have to tell you it's Elton John and not one of them got it right I couldn't believe it anyway that's a bit of Bullseye trivia for you so Back to the uh, job in hand, what we're going to do is we're going to undo all these screws here and we're going to take off this carb here. So I don't know where my decent screwdriver is, this one's got paint on because I've been painting and I've got paint on it which is really bad and it's from Asda as well but it just goes to show you don't need any expensive tools to start repairing lawnmowers for profit. So we'll take these off and we'll take this carb off and then I'm going to show you in this compartment here as well 
just where this diaphragm hooks on there's a little rod that goes up here and it's like a um, secret chamber could be um, like a Harry Potter thing couldn't it Briggs and Stratton in a se secret diaphragm chamber no right but we'll take that off and I'll show you in the uh, the chamber of secrets what's in there is that a Harry Potter thing I've not read Harry Potter books I've seen the films but to be honest with you I think it's all a bit dull it never really speaks does it everybody else does everything doesn't it anyway I've, uh, I've part seen all Harry Potter films, but I'm not really a fan. But um, anyway, it's interesting what you find out, isn't it? Stripping down a chokomatic Briggs card from the 80s is that I don't really like Harry Potter very much. So, <laughs> let's just have a look at this here. Let's just see what we've got. And this is going to be quite stiff. I'm going to put this driver on here and press this up a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's done exactly what I wanted it to do. So, my parts tray is getting a bit full. I'm going to take all these screws off and they've got little washers on. I'm try and keep these all kind of together in my parts tray. I'm glad that's come off. I want to be really careful with this gasket under here. I'm not sure if this is a diaphragm and gasket or a diaphragm or a gasket or both. So I think it's a gasket. But you can see under here there's a spring. See how this spring's coming out of here? And then you've got your tube. Just like the other standard Briggs cars that we do. So that's the whole thing out. And I need to have a really careful look under here where everything goes. As I said, I don't think I've ever had one of these before. And I'm not sure exactly what goes on under here. But one thing I am sure of is that all these parts need to be cleaned out. Down these holes. I'm going to get a cotton bud in here and clean all this out. Don't blow this out with an air compressor if there's fuel in it. Because it could uh, actually hit you in the face and hit you in the eye. So be very careful. I'm going to clean all this off. I'm going to take this gasket off this carb and we'll have a look under here and see how the whole configuration is, how it all goes together. In case you've got one of these um, or you, you, you see one that you want to repair for profit as well. So before I do that, we'll have a look in the uh, Chamber of Secrets in here and see exactly what's going on. Right, I might get this wrong. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on these because I'm not, but I'm going to try and take this spring off first. That was easy enough, wasn't it? So that, that come off there, look, there's a little pin there, hopefully you can just see there's a tiny little pin that sticks here through the diaphragm, put the spring somewhere safe I want to carefully, very carefully try and remove this gasket off here that's not bad actually, that's kind of lifting off alright, I just don't want to split it and you can see under here there's like a little connecting rod I'll show you up close in a second there we go, you can see I can't actually take this gasket off here because under here there's like a little connecting rod you see where my finger is just above my finger there so what we need to do is I need to open up this chamber here screwdriver just about right size keep my thumb on that I don't want to lose that screw so that's a little screw so I'm going to take that off hopefully that will come off which it does there's a little gasket on there as well so I need to be very careful not to lose that and what you have to do is unhook this linkage here once you've unhooked the linkage this little rod kind of pulls back down here through the gap and then you can take this off so that's how we get this off and it looks like one piece this it just looks like a gasket maybe a gasket might be a diaphragm I'm not sure I can never tell but the power as it looks to me there's only one on there so I can get in here now I'm not sure these pickup tubes come out like they do on the other style Briggs on the 35 classic engines I'm going to give that a bit of a, a bit of a pull but I'm not going to take that off and I don't want to snap it because obviously I've not got another one of these I'm going to take off this actual part here this seals the air filter to the top of this carb so we'll take that off see if there's any more bits we need to take off before we clean this so you can see how, how dirty it is inside there hopefully you can just about see all the dirt inside there so you can see exactly the dirt, I'm trying to show you that in better light really. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this in my ultrasonic cleaner because this has been sat for a few years by the look of it. It's a shame I can't get the pickup tube off, I'm quite tempted to um, to do to have a, a go at it but I'm not going to. But one thing you will need to do is get some carb spray on this part here as well, this little filter. Because this will have all galvanised um, petrol or what Americans call gas on it. If it goes hard it won't, uh, won't do its job. So I'm going to get my 
little ultrasonic cleaner we're going to put this in it we're going to clean this off and make sure it gets um, some internal cleaning as well right so I've just been in and stolen the kettle well that I'm going to fill this up and I haven't used this for a while somebody gave me this actually it used to be a dentist this used to be uh, used for kind of dentistry stuff so let's just see if I can drop most of that in there might have to take this out it's not very big that's the only thing but it's the only one I've got and I don't often use it so hopefully I can get most of it in it um, I'll try and fill it up the best I can. Oh, well, a bad guess, was it? Look at that. Alright, so I'll just put that on there. I've got some of this stuff here, this uh, C Clean. This is um, supposed to be using these ultrasonic cleaners, so I'm not exactly sure what it does, how it works. I think it's supposed to put about a cap full in, so we'll put about a cap full in. Um, and then I'm going to turn this on. We'll probably leave this on for around. 15 minutes and we'll hopefully it'll clean some of the dirt out the inside. You can see already just, um, I mean most of this is probably just coming off the outside to be fair. You can see already um, kind of it's started to work so I'm going to put the uh, lid on this and let this cook for a bit and we'll get on with something else. Right so while that's cooking I'll give this a bit of a clean up with some carb spray. Let's get some carb spray in all these little bits. I'm not sure that's uh, melting off anything that don't want to be there, so we'll leave that for a little bit. We'll let that carb do its thing in there. And what I'm hoping to do with that is just clean off anything on the inside that you can't get. So the vibrations are supposed to clean off um, any dirt from the inside where you can't normally get in to clean it. Once it's done, we'll uh, put some carb spray on that and we'll blow that all out with the compressor as well. So while I'm waiting, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a quick look and just see how this. Uh, I could cut that out of the video to be honest, but these are the things that happen aren't they? So I'll put that there, put that over there, stop it smelling. And I'll have a look at this, look at there's a spider in here, look. Look at that one. That's disgusting isn't it, look at that. Right, I'll put that there, keep that, can be our pet. I'll put the dirt in here, but um, what I want to see is what's happening with this. Ah, it appears to be springing about. I've left this for a few days actually. Oh god, that seems like it's gonna... Yeah, that's good, that's got some tension. So the spring's not gone on that, which is great, which means I should be able to rewind this by hand, clamp it, and then put a new pull cord rope through here and through ever, wherever it lines up with the outer side of this. So I've got to find a hole in the outer side of this reel here wind it and then try and thread the actual pull cord through this hole here through the reel and then tie a knot in this somewhere so I'm not exactly sure where it should come out normally there's a hole inside here where it pulls through so I'm going to have to work this out um, and see where it should come into it, it might be that it just comes through here and you tighten it up but then it won't drop on the shaft correctly so I'm going to have a quick look round off camera I'll have a guess and then I'll uh, come back to you in a second so my only guess so far is that it somehow pokes through here, through the reel and because this actually sits further back that there's kind of a gap, I can put my finger under here and round the lip that when you eventually get the actual pull cord through it just sits in here, it doesn't affect anything, that's my guess but having a look through this hole here and trying to line something up with the reel I can't actually see a hole on the reel so it's got to go in somewhere, I can't actually see where it is at the minute I think that's how it's going to be. When I find it, I'm going to try and put a pull cord through it. Hopefully it'll come through here, I can tie it and knot in it, and then pull it back through, tuck it under here somewhere, out of the way. So that's what I'm going to do, is try and find a hole in the outer reel on here. Right, so I think I've spotted a hole. So I'm going to mark this off just vaguely here. You can see there, I've got these three little lines here. What I'm trying to show you is it lines up with a actually where this pull cord should come through here so what I'm going to do now which is going to be difficult is I'm going to take this back kind of as far as I dare and then try and clamp this in a position and, and guess where it lines up to thread some pull cord rope through so it's going to be a complete guess and I can't imagine it's going to be that easy to do I can already feel 
I'm losing the battle with the, uh, the spring tension. So I'm going to go, I just need it to have enough tension to be able to put a rope on and kind of start it. So I'm going to go there, put my thumb through there. I'm just trying to hold against the uh, tension of the spring, but obviously it's not, it's not easy. So I'm trying to hold all this. Do it. I don't actually know if this clamp's going to be big enough to hold it either. So, let's have a fiddle around here. See if I can get this on somewhere. Don't help, and it's pulling. I've got all the tension of the, the spring against my fingers as well. So, let's go down this way. See if we can do anything from from this side. Let's just unwind this. It's like having a football match, isn't it? Right. Can I get that on there? Not quite. So I'm going to have to find another way to kind of stop this springing back because I'm getting cramp here in my hand. <laughs> um, I'm just going to have a look down here. See if I can see the hole. I think I can. I'm not entirely sure. Right, after five minutes of messing about, I think I've come up with a plan. So I've got a little clamp here that goes through the gap. Some of you might be pleased to see that, because you'll be watching going, why don't you just use a smaller clamp? Anyway, I think I was kind of missing the obvious here, but this has already got a little uh, black marking in here. You can see here, there's a tiny little hole, but where this line's up here, there is actually a hole in this reel. So I'm going to attempt to rewind this as far as I can. I kind of keep the clamp in a a reasonable position so when I get it there hopefully I can tighten this up and I'm guessing really because it's um, it's not an exact science as to where to tighten this up so I'm just gonna have to undo this clamp a bit more. In fact I might be I might might actually take it off for now. Problem is trying to hold everything together, get it in the correct place and then get the clamp in. So let's take this round. And it's really difficult to thread the threads through sometimes as well. Just unfortunate that this one doesn't have a pull cord on it, but I'd rather it didn't have the pull cord than the spring snapped. So as long as this spring don't kind of snap on me, I'm, uh, I'm not too bothered really. Just have a quick look at this. It's really difficult to tell. I'm going to guess at about there, try and get this clamp on, this might look really easy but I can assure you it's not, because there's a lot of spring tension there, so I'm going to clamp this. And I'm going to try and, uh, now I've got this clamp, I'm going to try and poke some actual rope down this hole, hopefully hook it through, get it out of here and tie a knot in it, and hopefully that'll have enough spring tension on. I'm going to make sure I make this pull cord rope too long as well. I can always shorten it and I don't want to have to do that part of it again. Luckily I've got a full reel of this stuff. It looks like the end's burnt on there which is great which means it won't fray. So I'm going to let a bit of that off there. I'm going to try my best to get this to thread through. But it could, you know, it could just be a case it might take me a minute. It could take me a few hours, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. So, just kind of lucky whether it goes through the hole or not. So I'll have a fiddle about. If I manage to hook it through, I'll uh, I'll come back. I kind of want it to go down a little bit there, so I'm not sure if I can get a screwdriver in there and kind of guide it a little bit.
I'm not sure if that's just gone in somewhere actually. It'd be good if it did. I'm actually going to be a bit brave here. I'm going to put my thumb on the top of this wheel here. I'm going to unhook the clamp because I might, I might have this somewhere near in the right position. So if I can just take that back a bit, I'm hoping I can just push this through here. Just push this in. I'm not convinced I'm going to get it there. I can just see it coming through there, can you see that? So, I'm ready to do some long nose pliers just to get my fingers on that. I'll try anything here, isn't it? Just to hook this to me a bit. So it don't go where I thought. That might have been pretty obvious to most people. So I'm going to clamp this again. And this is where I don't want the clamp to come off. Oh, I've got this little monkey through here. I said, do these things live. I don't cut these things out. You know, I just... Oh, don't go. Right. I'm quickly just going to tie a knot in here. Or two. If you're wondering what that noise was, is if you're under, wondering uh, what the noise is, by the way, it's just that parts washer there, that um, ultrasonic cleaner buzzing away in the background. So when I get that, I'll give this a bit of a pull with some pliers. And pull this back through here like this. Don't know why I found that so hard to work out, really. Maybe just a little bit tired as well. You know, when you get tired, you don't think as well sometimes, do you? So. Maybe it's just because I'm not very bright, I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it, as long as you get it done. So that's that. I'm going to put my thumb on there and undo this clamp. And I'm going to slowly, because this is still attached to the uh, this actual real pull cord here, so it can't go anywhere. I'm going to slowly take up the tension here with this hand to get some blood back in my fingers. I'm going to let this hopefully slowly take this pull cord back up. And that's as far as it's going to go. So I've got that. As I said, I'm going to give myself a little bit extra just for now. I'm going to put a pull cord handle on that's uh, too long, so I'm going to knife this off here. from up here and just burn the end off and just stops it fraying. Don't really do with plastic gloves on, just be careful if you do. Um, I've got that in there and then I can put a pull cord handle on here and then eventually I've got a pull cord that's going to pull it over so that yeah, as you see, it's gone back in a little bit further now, so it's a good job I gave, gave myself a little bit extra, isn't it? I've just about got enough, haven't I? So, going back in further each time, it's a little bit worrying, but I think I've got away with it. And one thing I don't like, these little uh, tabs on here, see these here, I'm just going to push these down, and actually bend that down on the other one. You can actually do that with your finger a little bit because I can feel the reel moving about, jiggling about quite a lot. So 
There we go, we've got a working pull cord. I'll find the handle and I'll attach it to the end of that. And that's a great job done. At least, uh, at least we can have a go and see if we can get this mower running now. I'm under my bench here, I've still got a few boxes with a few bits in, so I managed to find myself a pull cord handle over here. So, I'm not sure if there's a better one than that. I'll probably take one off there, but I don't really want to. But I've got a, a cheapy looking one, that'll do for now, so I'll swap this over. Right, so I'll just take this old pull cord over here. Grab this one, it's looking very dirty, I should have probably cleaned this off a bit better in here. So anyway, it's alright for now for testing it, isn't it? Then we'll swap it over again later on. To be honest, we could probably pull, now we've got one on, we could probably pull a new through, new one through by tying it to it. So, we'll get that on there for now. Pull the knot in there, shove that in there, that's alright. So at least I've got a handle, and I've got a, a pull cord. And that's going to do the job, that's going to turn over this motor. And that's all we need it to do. Look at that, I've got it about the right perfect length, look at that. Total guess. Right, so that's done for now, what's cleaning up. But I've got a starter, I've got this that's just finished, you probably just heard this click off. Let's take a look inside here and see what this looks like. Right, let's have a look in here, you can see all these bits, as I've said, a lot of these could just be off the, uh, could just be off the outside of the car, but at least it's had a go through there, and it's kind of given us a bit of a head start, so it's really hot, so I'm going to put that down, I'm going to tip that water out and get rid of that, I'm going to give this a spray up with carb spray, and I'm going to blow this out with the compressor, and then we'll have a look at re, uh, reattaching it, putting the car back together, putting it back on, putting some oil in, and seeing if we can actually start up this mower. So another thing I'm going to need to do as well is clean out the petrol tank. So we'll get started with that in a second, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at putting this car back together. Hmm, still quite a lot of dirt in there, isn't there? So it's still going to need uh, another good couple of cleans, really. Um, you want to make sure when you clean these you get down all these holes as well. So I'm going to clean that with some carb spray from now, I'm going to blow it out. And I probably will just give it another quick go once I've emptied that water out and give it another go in this ultrasonic cleaner as well. So just looking at this carb, it's still very dirty actually, so I'm going to give it a bit of carb spray in here. I'm going to give it a quick spray up and then blow it all out with a compressor. And I'm going to spray it with carb spray again. I'm going to leave it overnight just so it can soak in any... Uh, I need a hole. Definitely want some on there as well on this tip. Still any holes you can get in really. Anywhere you can see where you think it could get clogged. So definitely there. Definitely down these holes in here. And these ones in here like this. I'm give that a spray up. I'm going to give that a quick blow out with a compressor. This airline here. And I'm going to soak it in carb spray and I'm going to leave it overnight and then come back to this. Keep your eye in here, there's a rubber washer inside here as well, you don't want to lose that out. So. Like this little rubber washer, it's 
just jumped out of there so I'll pop that back in there I'll put my thumb over that so I don't lose that little bit as well so that's it I'm going to leave that I'm going to put that on the bench spray it with carb spray and I'm just going to leave that overnight right so I've got that carb sorted I'm going to the next thing I'm going to do before I waste any more time or spend any more time anyways I'm going to just remove this plug here I'm actually going to make sure that the piston actually moves and goes up and down in this engine because I've not actually done that yet and I don't want to start taking the ignition off before I've worked out if this uh, piston actually uh, goes up and down inside so it would be a bit of a pointless exercise if it didn't want it so I'm going to get this on here and I don't know how difficult this is going to be to get off here so well, not, not difficult at all it's, uh, it's already undone that's funny um, I asked my son earlier to come out and spray this with WD-40 while I was out he sprayed it, I just wonder if he's been in with his uh, spark plug tool and undone it for me as well as a bit of a surprise so anyway, that's out, um, short thread on that looks quite dirty, but that's um, out what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get this part of my uh, off my um, spark plug remover tool, I'm going to put it in here I'm going to feel for the piston, look at that Hopefully you can see there, that's going up and down, so we know that the uh, the piston's moving up and down. So there's a good chance that this lawnmower will run, so we're going to put that there. You see that's top dead centre there, we'll put that at the top there. So, no particular reason for that, it's just, I don't know where it is there. And I'm going to strip this off, I'm going to take this ignition coil off now. And we'll have a look underneath here, make sure everything else looks clean and tidy and there's no holes in anything. Now, I've watched a few videos on these actual older style engines recently uh, under here they've got some of them have got points on I don't know much about points apart from the fact that they need to be clean this looks like a standard ignition coil to me but I'm not exactly sure what's going to be underneath so I'm going to take this uh, ignition coil off I'm going to have a look underneath and see exactly what what we have got um, and hopefully it's just a, the normal standard coil I ain't got to start messing about with any points and cleaning stuff up I don't think it's too difficult to do, but it's not something personally I've ever done. So I'm going to take that off there. I'm going to make sure I can remember what's underneath it, which is absolutely nothing. So that should come out. That can come off and hide away down there. And then I'm going to take the other one off at the other side. And this has got a little, uh, what looks like an electrical connector to it. So I'm going to have to be real careful with this. Let's just see if we can get this off and make sure I don't round this off. Mm. Let's just make sure I've got the right tool. It's not essential I take this off and I'd, I'd kind of rather leave it on than round this off. But you see this here, I'm just going to try and get this off now. I don't want to round it off so I'm going to get a wire brush. I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean up before I actually get a socket on it and try and take this off. So I really don't want to round this off. Otherwise I probably can't get it, this ignition coil off. But to me it looks like there's, there's nothing else underneath it. And there's a, an even gap there. You can see the gap between the flywheel and the coil. So it's all set up correctly but I'm just taking it off just to inspect this manifold and everything. So... I'll uh, give it a clean up with the wire brush and see if I can get this off. I'm not convinced this is actually going to come off here, so yeah, I can feel my, I can feel it's just rounding off as I go along this. I really don't want to do that. If I can help it. Right, so that took a little bit longer than expected. I had to actually just cut across the top of this actual bolt here and put a slit in it so I can get this flat driver in here and undo it. And eventually I've got there, but I can tell you that's taken me a good sort of 10 minutes because there's no way that was coming off before. It was very, very tight. So we'll get that off. And that hasn't been easy, and I'll show you. I made a bit of a mess of getting it off, if I'm honest with you. So. I'm not even sure I really need to take it off, but I'll see here. Probably just see this. I've had to slit it along the top of it here, and then I got the flat headed screwdriver in and took it off. So that won't be going back on. I'll be swapping that part for another one. Make sure that I can get that off if I need to. So this lifts up now. I can see underneath here, there's nothing really too exciting to see. So I'm not exactly sure what this wire does on top of here, but I need to make sure it goes back. That's unusual. And on, on this one here, there's a little tab under there. Break anything off. But the normally uh, the used 
used to on, on the other lawnmowers I've done, say they're used to, this is older, on the other lawnmowers I've done, this pulls off the bottom of this so you can kind of remove this out of the way. So I've also got a wire that's running along here, so I'm not sure if it just grounds it all or earths it, and it goes into a little actual, probably like a little kill switch that's just under here. So let's just move this so you can see. You can see around here, there's a little switch here and a wire here that runs underneath. So I guess that's some form of kill switch. So I can take that off anyway, I can move that out of the way and I can get to this inlet here. I just want to make sure that this is tight. I don't particularly want to take this off because this has got a little gasket in here and this is really old and I have a strong feeling and there's a strong possibility if I take that off that I will ruin the gasket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean around it. I'm going to blow this out with the uh, airline and I'm just going to clean it all off and put this all back. And I'm going to show you how to set this ignition coil back up. We'll put that back together. So I just wanted to check that this wasn't loose, which it's not, and there was no cracks or holes in here. You see around here, sometimes you might find that if you you've done everything with the carb and you can't get a mower running right there's actually a little gasket that sits between this inlet manifold and the engine and sometimes have a hole in sometimes these little parts have a hole in the side around here and you can see something so I'm going to clean this off and another reason is I want to take this off this part here this I think this is like an air intake because if this carb doesn't work this one up here that I've cleaned off I'm going to have to swap this over I believe I'll have to swap this over with one off this mower here that's hiding underneath here to make it the right length and actually put a different carb on like a normal um, Briggs carb like I've got on here I'm going to swap it for a carb like this if it doesn't work so while I've got this off here I'm going to make sure I can get this part off I'm going to unscrew this part it runs right through here and into the back of there so I'm going to take that off and make sure I can get that off if I need to without having to take the recoil off and everything else so I'm going to do that I'm going to clean it up and then we'll put it all back together Right, so that's a little bit of a clean up, so I want to get this part off here. This ain't just as always in my way when I'm filming. But I want to get this part off here. Let's just see if I can help. Let's just stick it right down there. You can see? Oh, that's it, good. So, yeah, I can see. We'll just get that in there like that. I want to make sure that this, actually, I can actually get this out. I'm going to just clean all this off and put this back together. Just rip on rid of this. It should come off at the far side. Now I watched a few videos on this earlier and I think that this would be too long if I wanted to use a standard carb. I am of course hoping to use the carb I've taken off and serviced but if not I am going to swap this over. So this part just comes off here. So I'm not going to go mad cleaning this mower up just at the minute because obviously it might not run at all. So I'm just going to get to the point where I can start this up and kind of hopefully show you it um, attempting to start or me attempting to start it for now. So for now I'm just going to clean off kind of the, the worst the worst bits. I've cleaned off all these cooling fins and stuff and to be fair it wasn't really full of um, old grass and things like that inside it was quite good so I've cleaned that off I'm going to put this back on for now I might just um, grease this little end up here a little bit just in case it gets stuck back in there again it just makes it easy to get, get off and then I'm going to show you how to set up this ignition coil here as well right so we'll just have a go putting this back in here just push this through here look you should just go back on again like that. Let's just have a quick go at that, that's it. They're always a little bit fiddly to do these, a little bit wriggly. And you kind of, kind of got to move them up and down a bit to get them to thread. But at least it's come off, because I could have been in a bit of trouble there. I've got to swap this carb. Let's put that on there. And that's that. That's as tight as it's going to go. We'll nip that up around there, which wants to go a little bit further. For now that'll be okay. What I normally like to do with these coils is just clean clean these up a little bit along here but everything is kind of starting to come apart on this so I'm going to be very careful with this I'm going to put this back on making sure I don't disrupt any of these wires and if anybody else has got one of these wondering how they've actually located the wires or where the wires go to that's where it goes and this one as I said here goes to some sort of switch which is underneath here so I'm going to put this coil back on I'm going to set it against this magnet here on this flywheel the one thing I'm concerned about before I put this back together is this actual governor here. Now this plastic part goes over the top of this. You can see here, and it's supposed to slide around. Even with this tightened down, this part goes back through the coil up here. Even with this tightened down, this is supposed to move around it. So, because this has been sat so long, what I think I'm going to do with this is 
I'm going to actually take this out, kind of lubricate this up and clean all this up a bit just to make sure it can do what it's supposed to do and actually slide around. It's kind of supposed to open and close on the sides of this bolt but there's a lot of rust inside here so I'm going to take this out of here and get this all cleaned up. That's it. You can see here. See here, it's like got a, like a, a shaft here that's supposed to be smooth, and this part's supposed to spin around on it. But this has been stood for a long time, as I've said. So if I clean this out, what I'm thinking is, when I put this back together, I should be able to take this down, and the actual governor flap, which is this here, this plastic bit, should be able to move freely, and the spring might operate properly. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just get a little bit of wire wool on there, and I'm just going to clean this part up, and I'm going to clean the inside of this actual governor flap as well. So that'll take me a couple of minutes and I think it'll be well worth it to be honest with you. So I'm just kind of going to fiddle about with this a little bit, I've got a little bit of wire wool here. I'm just going to take this around here. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be clean enough so I'm sure that it's going to move about and do its job. So if it doesn't open and close properly this will either run at full speed, it won't run at all or it'll run too slow or not start. There's all sorts of problems you could have just by this not being clean and working as it should. It's not perfect because there is quite a bit of rust on it. But it is quite important that it actually moves and stuff. So let's just whack a bit of that in there. Let's clean all this out. And what I want to try and do is put this in here and kind of hold it and get it to a point where I feel like this actually turns nice and freely inside here. So when I put this back together, this can move about and hopefully this spring will um, be doing what it's supposed to do as well. So I'm going to spend another couple of minutes just working this in and out of here, making sure everything's moving about like it should do. I've just had a, an idea which is completely overkill. Uh, I'll probably get some comments about this in the comments section. I do try and answer all the comments on the latest videos I do by the way. And even if someone asks me a question on the, a lot of the older ones, if I think I can quickly help, I'm kind of on my phone at the time, I do, start, I do try and answer the questions. So if you want to leave me a comment, please... Um, Please feel free to do that in the comments section of the video. But anyway, the, the, the overkill thing that I've just had the idea about is if I put this on the end of this impact here, like this, and put it on like this, it might just give it a spin for a bit. And go back the other way. I'm just going to give it a really good spin to make sure it's as free as I can possibly get this. As I said, probably massive overkill this, but it's worth a try. So that should be good enough to hopefully free that up. Certainly not going to get any better than that anyway. So if I hold this with the socket, I should be able to feel if it's twisting on this shaft as well. Yeah, you can see how much freer that is. I'm, I'm not having to fight with that at all. That's nice and loose. And that's what I want. So this can actually turn now. I've got half a chance of this spring actually moving like it should do to actually set the speed of the engine. So that's great. That's, I feel like that's going to make a massive difference actually. But I tried to get this running before. Even if it had just been stood there for years, there's no way it would have run at the right speed with that governor flap open like that. I don't normally film this bit, but... I've just dropped all these on the floor and you think, I normally show this and then I say oh, I found a part I need in the box and everyone thinks oh that was lucky, I bet he bought it really or I bet he never really had it. So you're coming on uh, part hunting with me underneath here. Uh, what have I got there? Problem is I've tidied everything up so I can't find anything. Uh, right. This is tumble driving on the isn't it? Yeah. I always keep a few bits it's awful if you want something and you can't find it, innit? Right, let's see what I've got here. There are all sorts of bits in here. What I'm looking for is a spare coil, really. Like that. Oh, great, I've taken them out, look. There's a good chance that they're in the box now, so... Sorry, I ain't got any room. Oh. I do all these things and I'm not normally filming, but if I've got to look for it, then you'll probably will be. Find. It's going to be one of those where you have to tip the box out. I think. Right, here we go. 
the things you do there's one what's that that might fit I'll keep that one for now there's another one keep that keep that there's a few different options there that's too big there's one what's that like look at that where's that broken one hmm might be a bit short thread's a bit small I think isn't it let's try it I think the thread's too small. Let's have another look for a different one. Right, so I found a few parts. I've just tried this one here. This one seems to fit nice, but I found a few other bits I'm going to keep to one side. These are bits you should never throw out. These little linkages and that part. See, this is a, like a, a rubber. Is it a grommet? A Wallace and Gromit? Anyway, it's better than this one, isn't it? This one's rock hard, so I put that in there. Um, I think it was that one that fitted, wasn't it? So let's have a look in here, innit? Yeah, so that's going to fit. Hopefully it won't be too long. I'll just test that in there in a minute just to make sure it's not too long and it will actually tighten this coil up. But I found it fits um, nicely. So we'll use that and we'll get this ignition coil back on. Right, I've just put this camera on the other side. What I've done is I've loosely just put these bolts back in here so everything's slack. And these magnets have to be out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is just a bit of card off the top of this like rubber glove box from up here, look. Just a thin bit of card, a plain card would do or I sometimes even use the, the card off the spark plug boxes so get that and slide it down this cap here we're going to turn it till these magnets grab this coil there's not a lot of grab there to be honest let's just make sure that does grab there's nothing grabbing out there that's a bit worrying right so those aren't actually particularly good those magnets let's try these you see how that grabbed I'll really grab there. So what I will do as well is I'll clean this off with a bit of wire wool. Make sure this magnet's clean. You can see how I can't even get that off now. I can't even pull that. So I'm going to have to spin it. Put that down a minute. Right, get that away. Put the card back in. This just forms the gap you see. So you get an even gap between the coil and this flywheel here. So I'll put that in. Turn this. And now it's grabbed it. You see how it's grabbed it? Make sure this is pushed down. And I'm going to just loosely tighten these up a little bit. If you can loosely tighten something up. Is that a thing you can do? Probably not. I used to edit all these bits out of the video, but it's quite fun, isn't it, really? So I'll loosely tighten this one up. And I'll loosely tighten this one up at the other side. Make sure that this is still grabbing onto these magnets here, which it is. I'm going to tighten that one. It's just really a case of tightening these evenly. Let's get that down there as well. This has got to be tight this side as well. So I really need to make sure that this still moves about. I never think this is a good design. You've got to get it tight enough so that the coil's not going to move. But also you've got to make sure that this actual governor is going to move as well. So what I might have to do with this is take this off and just put a washer at the bottom of here. In fact I'm going to try that now. Right, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to do it anyway, so I'll just quickly take that off there. I'm going to grab a washer. I'm not sure if I should put it at the top or the bottom, really. All you can see is my arm, isn't it? I'm just going to put that on the bottom there. I'm going to put this back on here. Like this. Shove this all back through. I just want to make sure I can tighten it and the governor flap moves as well, so I'll just go slowly with this. This has got adjustable torque, by the way, so you can go really slow with it. Like that. So you're not going to break anything. See that's tight now and this flap moves about. So I'm just going to check that because I want to be able to feel that it's tight. I've, all I've done is put a washer at the bottom. See, see that's as tight as I can get that. That coil is tight, which it should be. It's tight there. tight there, just double check this here, I can't tighten that anymore really, and this moves about, that's exactly what I should do, so if you're still struggling with any mower and you can't get that working, I would suggest that you just get a little washer and put it here, the only, the only problem I might have with that is it might stop this actual electrical current getting through, so if I've got no spark 
it could be because I've messed it up by putting something like a washer on there so I have to remember that but I've got the gap set so if I spin this round now and pull the carb out I'll have a gap, a nice even gap here between this flywheel and this ignition coil so I've got the ignition coil set, I've got the gap set, I've got the spring working as it should moving about and that'll be better still when this is connected to the carb and I'm happy with that, that's the ignition coil set governor flap working as I think it should and I'm happy to put that back together for now so we can try this mower and I've just got to say if you've watched all this video up to now you've had a cup of tea or you're trying to fall off to sleep if you've got this far without having a break you definitely can call yourself a super fan of the channel so <laughs> the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I've got a spark so I'm going to put a new plug in here this is a what I use on all the Briggs engines, this is a B2 LM I'm going to check that fits first it's actually a little bit bigger than the one I've taken out but it should work ok if it doesn't I'll swap it but I want to check that I can actually get a spark so I'm going to push that in there I'm going to set this against something metal and I'm going to turn the lights off and I'm going to spin this actual uh, flywheel just to see, I just want to make sure I get a spark and I might even have to put the actual recoil on just to test this because I want to make sure I've got the compression, I've got the piston working, I want to make sure I've got spark I want to make sure I've got a chance of getting fuel through this carb if I've got all those three things usually a lawnmower would run, the only reason it wouldn't run is if the timing is out and if the timing was out you would have a, a sheared flywheel key which we can sort out under here but I'm not going to go that far into this video if I don't need to because of course it might not be broken so I'm going to make sure I've got spark next and that's um, pretty simple to do, just set this against something metal and we'll just turn this basically see if we get any sort of spark that's all we really need to do right I've just loosely just put some bolts back in this coil here set this plug against this bolt here and I've just seen a little spark so hopefully you can see it I'll turn the light off in fact and I'll try to see my way back without falling over in dark and see if I can do this for you I'm not sure if it will pitch black don't worry if it goes black on the camera oh yeah I can't do it that's really dark isn't it um, that's too dark can't really do that I don't think I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll get my phone, this is a first for YouTube, I'm going to get my phone, turn the garage lights off, put my phone torch on, and then I'm going to come back, turn the torch off, and then I'm going to show you the spark. Right, give me a second. Don't worry if the screen goes black. Right, here we go. Coming back. I'm on my way back. Right, let me have a look here. Let's try and just leave a little bit of light on there. So... Hopefully you'll be able to see the spark now. You see, I'll just put this on a little bit. God, the neighbours will think I'm in burgles. This is ridiculous, isn't it? There you go. See the, see the spark? It's around down here somewhere. Watch. Ready? Great. I've got some spark, that's all I wanted to show you. Honestly the lens you go to on, on a, making a YouTube video just to show somebody something, sometimes that is just absolutely ridiculous but you can see I've got spark and it's really important that I check that but I want to show you something else. This spring configuration here, you can see I've just dropped this um, recoil cover back on, apologies for my poor camera work, my tripod's just moving about a bit, but with the recoil cover back on if you remember back to the beginning of the video how this didn't move you see how it springs around now not having to force anything like that so when we hook this back up to the car this should be able to find the correct speed so that's great I've got spark I'm going to put this car back together and put it back on put some oil in connect the spark plug up and I'm going to take this outside I'm going to try and fire this up it's like um, world's worst lawnmower I think um, Martin did one on Retro Restore I think I did one a while ago called the world's worst lawnmower. This is kind of it really, isn't it, I suppose. It's not rotten or anything, but it's taking some uh, freeing up and some getting going. So that's um, one thing to definitely look out for. And that's not just on this mower either. That's on any Briggs engine with a, like a classic engine, 35 classic. You must have this governor moving freely. Right, so I've just had a thought. What I'm going to do next with this mower is I'm actually going to take the blade off and sharpen this because if by some... Uh, 
miracle this actually starts. I don't have to tip the lawnmower up again full of petrol and oil. So while there's no fluids in this at all, there's no oil, there's no petrol, the carb's not even on. I'm going to tip this up, I'm going to take the blade off, I'm going to sharpen it. Now, I'd imagine this blade hasn't been off, like I say, probably for around 20 years. So I'm going to have to try and loosen this up. And one good tip I always share is to just spray this up with WD-40, get your wire brush on, make sure the bolt's as clean as possible. And I'm going to use my impact gun to actually take this off and hopefully it'll be powerful enough to take this off we can sharpen this blade up and while I'm underneath there as well I'm going to actually look for a drain plug on this engine and if there is one I'm going to crack it open see if we can get a little bit more oil out of this lawnmower that might be left in the bottom of here because I really want to get as much of this oil out as possible right so I'm going to tip this lawnmower up just leave it on its side like this and I'll show you the underside right, of this little closet. Imagine one of these from sort of 15 years ago that one. This style of deck, this aluminium deck, it had been rotted through, so I want a good clean up. I can do that off camera. I'm just going to get a wire brush and clean all this off just for kind of good measure. But this looks nice and clean and tidy actually. I'm going to try and zip this off. This is actually on the disc. You can see down the back of here, it's starting to rust, you can tell. But I'm going to try and get this off, so we'll give that a bit of a spray up and we'll try and zip this off and sharpen the blade up. So just as a test, before I actually uh, use the power actual impact drill, I always like to try this Ryobi one that I've got as well, and um, see if I can get it off using the battery powered one. So let's try to find the right socket. It's got a few things wrapped around it, little uh, bits of cord and stuff like that. It's really quite clean, I'm surprised how clean that is actually. So. Still can't quite understand why the 14mm impact won't, won't fit. Very strange that. That's the one off the impact. And this is the one from the Halford socket set I've got. There's a link to the uh, Halford socket set in the description of this video by the way. Which um, I've had about probably had about 10 years now. But, uh, yeah this is annoying but I really do want to get this on here. Just need it bumping on a bit. So. Where's my Ryobi one? Let's have a quick look. I am very organised, I've only just started filming again. So, let's just uh, grab this. I'll grab this one. I'm not sure this is going to do it, but we'll try it. Make sure if you do this, not that this can start because there's no fuel in it, but just our habit, just make sure that the spark plug's not connected. So, another thing, mind your fingers here, don't leave them, although there's a gap. Very quickly spin and hurt yourself doing this. Just be really careful, have a good look before you do this. And there we go. That's off. And this is why these tools are just so helpful. I mean that's an 18 volt battery impact drill and it's zipped that off after who knows how many years. So that's great, I've got that off and I can give this a sharpen up. So now this is off I can see I could take this disc off but I don't really want to have to get into trying to pull that off. These are really awkward to get off when they're stuck on. Because they're stuck onto the shaft here. You can pull these off, it's quite difficult to do. But I wanted to show you this here. This is the, uh, the drain plug. Above this is where I actually took the oil out from when I turned it over. But you can actually drain these from the bottom of here as well. You see this, like a square plug. I'm going to try and crack that open in a minute and see if I can drain anything else that's left out of there. I don't need to take the engine off or anything like that, but just to show you, these would be the bolts where you would do that. So I'm going to try and crack that open, see if I can get a little bit more oil out of the bottom of this mower. I'm not too worried if I can't, but I'm going to sharpen the blade up. So what I usually do with these that are really old is I just give them a bit of a clean up and take this out of here and keep it all together. And if you never show which way around the blade goes, just um, you can mark it off with a marker pen. I normally do that to be fair. I'm not sure if this pulls out of here. It doesn't need to actually goes right through there, can you see? So that's good. I mean to to remember which way around it goes. If there's loads of excess rust, you can just take a few minutes, go around it, just clean it off a little bit. I think a lot of this has kind of fallen off. You can see it's starting to come off there. Some big bits like this, because you want to be able to get this kind of balanced when you get it back on. You don't want one side heavier than the other. Now I've actually got a tool for balancing these blades, so when we sharpen this, we can just drop it on this little tool like this, and it'll tell you if the blade's balanced, you can see which way it needs to go, as long as it's kind of not touching the, the bench at one side or the other, that's always a good start. So, Right, this is by no means perfect, I've only spent a minute doing it. You can see along here, 
there's still a little bit of an angle there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my actual bench grinder and um, first of all what I do is I go across it and just take all the big notches out of these blades and then I just follow the natural angle as much as I possibly can going from about here on this blade to the end that's all I'm going to do there and I'm going to do the same there it's quite warm this blade but as long as you follow the natural angle and get the angle somewhere near you should be okay now this it is quite important this especially on the, um, the bigger mowers as well because if you don't get the angle right when it actually chops the grass and it's trying to collect it into the actual grass box at the back you don't get enough lift with the air because you've not got the right angle you don't often get the correct lift so the grass tends to drop back down this is why stuff sometimes gets churned up underneath your lawnmower especially when it's wet so I'm going to follow the natural angle with my bench grind I'm not going to show all that bit and then I'm going to just balance this basically using this tool like I've already shown you make sure it's balanced pop it back on see that's better already look at that that's just because I've taken the rust off okay so that's sharp and I'm going to put this back on which was like this, I think it was like that wasn't it, yeah that's right put that back on there, put that back in there like that and then I'm going to pop this back on because even if I'm going to give this lawnmower away there's no point giving it to somebody if the blades aren't sharp is there so again round your fingers and we'll get this on here again, still a bit of a tight fit and that's it what I've got to do next, spend the next few minutes getting this off here. I had this before, I did it off camera, but I managed to do it this time. So that's back on, it's natural for it to bend to the disc like that as well. I'm going to give this a little bit of a clean up, I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to tip this back over and we're going to get this carb put back together and put back on. Right, so let's get this carb back together. When you're doing any lawnmower repair, you want to spend most of your time making sure that the carbs is kind of going to work, because obviously if it doesn't, your lawnmower's not going to run. So. I'm going to show you how to put this back together, well I'm saying that, I've never really done it before but I'm going to um, put it back together, might get this wrong but I think that goes through there and that goes through the hole so see if we can get a few things lined up here, that's pretty easy to do isn't it I think, yeah I've got that right, these holes line up put that little hook back through there and then this here, I'm not sure how well I showed this before but it's actually hooks here in this plastic bit there like that so this all goes up and down and I've got to find that little spring now that I said I wouldn't lose so hopefully I've kept that in my park tray somewhere if I lost that I'm a bit stuffed out so I've got that there look I'm going to put that on there right so after a few minutes of fiddling about there's a couple of little tabs on there just bend them out a little bit put the spring in and then just push this back together so I want to get this back in here now I'm going to put that part here this metal rod here through this hole like this and to put it through here first though let's just put this pickup tube through there put this little rod thing through the hole and get this lined up I'd rather do it this way because then when I turn it over and push this down I know the spring is going to be in the right place so we'll hook this in here this little plastic part here I'll just push that in there like that make sure it's in properly and then I'm going to look and I'm going to make sure that this actual spring goes down this hole correctly so I'm not happy with that I want to make sure that this is correct it wants to be higher up that's better I'll get that like that and line that up I'm going to turn this over this is actually quite fiddly to do I'm going to try and leave everything lined up and I'm going to look and make sure this spring sits neatly and straight down that hole which it has and then I'm going to line everything up the gasket and the actual carb itself I'm not really too happy with that so I'm going to do that again I'm going to take that off again and unless you're convinced you've done this right it might just take you a few goes but it's a little bit awkward to try and hold everything together make sure the spring sits evenly in the hole that's better I'm, I'm happier with that so let's just try and get this lined up like this very fiddly to do this actually didn't expect it to be as difficult as that I'm just looking down from the top to make sure I've got the carb sat on top of the gasket properly and I'm going to bend down and I'm going to have a cheeky little look at the spring 
to make sure it's sat where I want it to sit, which it is. That's the main thing I'm concerned about. And the next thing I'm concerned about is not damaging this gasket again because what's happening with the spring at the bottom is it's pushing the gasket up so it may look like I'm being a bit clumsy with this but you've got something pushing against it which you wouldn't normally have so I've got that there I've got these holes lined up neatly I'm going to very carefully just find some screws here and these are actually straight they're not crosshead screws these so put one of these in here and you must make sure that this is really lined up I'm just going to put one hand tight in there like that and I'm going to go across to the other side always making sure that every single thing's lined up there's one I can't see there so I just want to have a really good look yeah I'm happy with that I'll put that one in there I'm just going to start these a little bit if you get this bit wrong it definitely won't run so all the way through I'm just looking in here making sure from the top that all these holes here line up you can see right through to where the actual screws are going to want to go in and be threaded so now I'm happy that that's lined up with the two opposite each other I'm going to put the other ones in and I'm still going to work diagonally across as well I'm just going to put that one in there this one in here like this and I'm not tightening any of these up I'm just kind of starting them off just so they're all set in a nice position and before we tighten it up as well I just want to make sure this is something you need to check is that this is actually in the right position here which it is I've got all five of these screws in here now so I'm going to grab a better screwdriver and I'm going to start to tighten these up and again I'm not over tightening these I'm just nipping these up diagonally kind of working across from each other as you should always do with things like this and now these are fairly tight I'm going to start to tighten these up I'm going to tighten that one up and I'm going to go across here to this one and we'll go back to this one here and across to the other side in fact while I'm thinking about this I saw I, was, I think I was listening to a video on the computer the other night someone doing this believe it or not I wasn't even watching it I'm sure somebody said on one of these standard calves, these Briggs calves, if you get a diaphragm and gasket and it doesn't work right, you can fit two diaphragms. So it's not something I've tried, but I'm going to try it in a future video. So I've got that in there. One thing I'm really keen to see is just how easy this actual chokematic carb opens and closes. So you can see it's still sticking a little bit. I don't think it ever goes past that point. So if you watch it from here, you can see how this goes back like this and that means the spring which was connected to this rod inside here must be in the right position because otherwise this wouldn't close so I've just made unfortunately made sure that's popped out of there I don't like that coming out of there I actually didn't think I'd be able to get that back in if it came out so I think that's why you get this cover that goes over the top because this cover probably stops it being able to pop off so you must remember to put that back on and just in case you don't watch the rest of this video one thing you must do if you're going to try these carbs without the air filter on is you must put this screw back in here because apparently with this screw not in here it sucks in too much air and it doesn't run right you get away with this on, on the classic Briggs engines on the 35 classic engines but on these ones you must put the um, actual air filter screw back in so I haven't actually cleaned that off yet but if you're going to run this you must put that back in in fact let's just screw that in and see if this, this um, choke still opens and closes so if you're going to try it without the, the air filter now you see that's popped out again there right let's just get that there yeah and that's opening and closing nicely so I'm going to leave that in there actually I'm going to put this cover back on here let's see how that went on there it must have gone on across like that yeah and that what that does is it presses it so the actual linkage can't come out so you can't can't get it wrong now really once you've got that there I think that's the right screw isn't it I'm gonna put that in I think it's the right screw I'm not 100% sure but I think it is it's the only small small one I've got in the tray I'm gonna put that in there 
and make sure it's tight like that and then this shouldn't come off again now you can see this opening and closing. I know I've showed this loads of times but there are many good videos on YouTube showing these chocomatic carbs so I'm spending a little bit of time kind of maybe a bit boring but I want to for some people I want to I want to show how far it opens before it sticks and what happens is it opens until it hits the screw can you see it actually hits the actual shaft here I'm trying to show you from a better angle it hits it you see at the top and then goes back down so I guess you should be able to press it as far as you want like that and it should still spring back which this one does and it definitely didn't work as well as that before so that's the carb back together I'm going to put this back on the mower I'm going to put some oil and fuel in this and then in the morning which will be a minute for you <laughs> we'll go outside and we'll, we'll test this lawnmower and I don't really see too many reasons why it wouldn't run because it's got spark hopefully with the carb service it's going to get fuel it's got a new plug in it as well we know that the piston goes up and down we've got some compression we've got a pull cord fitted and if it works we've got a sharp blade so I'm going to put this back on the mower ok let's have a go at getting this back on one thing I haven't really shown yet as well turn my screen around so I can see what I'm doing there's a little uh, rubber washer in here it's like an o-ring you must make sure that that's sat in here and it goes correctly on this inlet manifold here so let's have a go at putting this back on I did a little bit of investigation work about this spring this linkage earlier as well and it does look on a lot of videos like it pokes out of that side so I'm fairly fairly happy that that's correct and we're going to poke this linkage on and this is so much easier with no fuel you see you've got no fuel in this cab, it's all clean and tidy it's so much easier when there's, there's no fuel in this so we're going to hook this on let's just move this higher just through again it's been a real pain this hasn't it quite heavy to move as well actually and that's it, let's get that there so you can see so Hopefully you can see well enough. I'm going to hook this linkage back in this tiny little hole here. See this hole here? I'm going to put it in that hole there. Like that. Let's just make sure this goes where I want it to go. It actually goes through properly yeah, like that. And then I'm going to push this back on this inlet manifold. Making sure I can kind of feel it suctions its way on there so I've got that part there there should be something here that I've taken off as well so I want that back on there and that goes there I think it go there so go like that just like that that Tommy Cooper wasn't it just like that I can't remember oh no I've got a video I can look back on anyway flywheels always it wrong way in it but there is it like that? I don't remember that sitting on top of that fuel tank. Oh no. I think that's it. Right, let's have a go at that. But there's a, a space somewhere as well as well to go in, isn't there? So as well as well. Here's a space to go in here. Ah, it's getting late again. Right. I hope this works after all this effort. I really do. You really are a super fan if you've watched all this. Let's push that back in there. first like that push this through the Kevin Spacer eh? okay. right. just start that a little bit Let's see if we can get that thread in all the time I'm doing this I'm making sure that this is kind of pushed to make sure it's actually on the, the manifold correctly so I just want to get this started like that and I'm going to get the, uh, the old impact and just zip this up yeah so that's started I can't pull that back out and um, I'm not convinced this is right yet so I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that this goes in the right place right now I'm really glad that this has happened but something has kind of gone wrong with that spacer there I've got this part missing but all the time I'm doing this and pushing this back on I'm making sure this governor flap moves correctly and obviously you can tell it doesn't so I'm looking here 
and I, I know that this must be hooked in the wrong place or this part must be the wrong way around and this is why at the beginning I'm going to put up some uh, photos on the screen now this is why I took these photographs that show exactly where these linkages go because currently I'm not sure so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cab off again and see which way around this little part should go looking at the images on my phone put it back because this must move freely and it's not you can see here there's a little screw here I think this sets the idle speed so it should push against something and at the minute it's just, just kind of moving into nothing as you can see there it's not really having a function so this is wrong I want to take this off and have another look at this right so I'm back and I think one of the things amongst a couple of things that were happening is that this part from an inner parts washer just needed lubricating a bit you can see how this all springs about now so I'm happy that that's moving freely but what I don't like still is how far away this governor is, I think this should be nearer the flywheel when it's not running like this, so I'm going to loosen this off I'm going to try and adjust this, which I wouldn't normally have to do really I'm going to try and put this, set this nearer the flywheel like that so that it's got a little bit more distance to travel when it opens and closes I think if you start off there and then open to this point it's going to be running too fast and even faster than too fast so I'm going to have a fiddle about with this part here so I've just undone this, this is where we put this through this ignition coil and I've slackened this off and it still moves to the same position so I'm going to have to trust for now that this is right I didn't think that you should have to make an adjustment on the governor flap so I'm going to put that back as it was before and tighten it up and as I said near the beginning of the video if you can remember back about four years ago <laughs> when I started filming this video I was never convinced that this linkage went into this governor arm in the right place but it is all moving about and it does open and close so the only other thing I can try if I actually get this running is to take this out and, and re-hook this actual spring into this governor if it runs too fast. But at least it's moving about and springing around and stuff so we'll see what we get. I don't think there's anything else I can do with this at this point and everything is moving freely. Right so I've bolted the carb on, didn't need to see that again. I've got the spacer in, got this the right way around, put the little bolt in the front of here as well. Got that back on, I'm just going to give this little uh, chokomatic a little play again, make sure it opens all the way as far as it can possibly open now with this screw in, which it does, goes all the way back. I've got movement on the springs, although I'm not entirely sure it's correct. I'm going to put the recall cover back on, I'm going to put a bit of oil in here, I'm going to do that before I forget, and I'm going to give this a quick pull over in the garage because it's, it's late at night now, it's dark outside. I'm going to see if we get any sign of life, and if not, I'll set this outside, which will be in about 30 seconds time for you. Um, and I'll have to wait all night to try this. But I'll, I'll give it a quick go before I go in tonight. We'll just put this recall cover on, give this a quick pull over. So I'm just going to lock up these uh, bolts on this engine, actually. They're bigger than that, aren't they? Keep putting that 10 on. I think these are 12, aren't they? I think they're 12, anyway. Let's try it. Uh, still not happy, let's try an 11. Not had a lot of luck with these sizes ever. Uh, let's find an 11. Little 11 here we go. That one tight. I must remember to put some oil in this mode before I start it. Normally I leave myself a ticket on the spark plug end just to remind myself. A couple of things just to look at as well when you do put this back on, make sure all this still moves about. You can see it's kind of sticking a little bit still. I want that to be free and this can happen when you maybe get the, the pull cord on in the position. It's not exactly supposed to be on and off too hard. Maybe this one's bending down a little bit but you must make sure these move freely and this one at the minute just doesn't and I'm not sure why but I'm going to lift that off. I'm not sure why it doesn't, maybe this governor flap's just a bit too high because I put the washer on. Do you remember I put the washer on to make sure it actually um, connects and spins on the governor flap? Well because I've done that, what it's done is it's pushed up the height of this little plastic tab here and it's made it so it doesn't open and close properly. And this is why you have to be really careful when you start adding parts because I've added that part, this doesn't open and close quite properly, you can see it's just catching on there. This is a little bit higher than it used to be, so you can see I've caused myself a problem there by putting that little washer on. 
So I can either, I can just shave a little bit off this recoil cover and leave it as it is or I can just move it about a little bit, I can bend this down a little bit but be careful when you're adding parts that weren't there when you took them off and that's um, a good example of what can go wrong really Right, I've just dropped some oil in this, got this back together taking that washer off the um, ignition coil I didn't really like that in the first place um, in fact I've forgotten, I haven't put any petrol in here so put the plug in, I'm going to put a bit of petrol in here let's see if this uh, will fire Right, let's try this it's, um, Show you outside, like. It's pitch black out here, it's like half past ten at night now, so I've got no throttle on this either, so if it starts, which I'm not sure it will, I don't really know how to stop it. So, um, no primer, it's a chocomatic thing, so I've got the plug in, got some fuel in, got some oil in, got the blade on, got a pull cord on, so I'm hoping it's going to kind of start and die and I can leave it for tonight. But... Really sure you get any fuel through it to the first time if you've got no primer. Um, anyway, there's no primer on here, so let's just try it a few times. No signs of life at all there, is there? So let's give it a few more goes. Sign of life, just a little splutter. Nothing, so I'm going to leave that till tomorrow. Um, I'll probably fire some quick start down, get some fuel in there, and see if we can uh, just get this to spark into life somehow. But I'm not sure at the minute it's going to. Right, so next day, it's another lovely sunny day here in sunny Yorkshire. As you can see, I want to get outside and uh, have a go with this lawnmower. And of course, it's absolutely throwing it down. But I was laid in bed last night thinking, why won't this lawnmower start? And I remembered, a f well, I remembered a few things actually that I want to look at. But one of them was this, actually the adjustment screw for the carb. Forgot to put this back on, so if you spotted that, leave me a comment in the comment section. So I'm going to quickly take this carb off, I'm going to put this back on. I think it was one and three quarter turns from fully screwed in. I'm going to put that on, just take this carb off, put this back on, and then I'll um, I'll test this lawnmower again. I'm not convinced that it's going to run, to be honest, just at the minute, but it definitely won't run without that in. So if you spotted that, leave me a comment. You've done better than I did putting it back together. It just shows you what happens when you get tired on a night, really, and you miss things. Right, so pop this screw back in, you can see here, taking this off. So I'm going to go right, that's right in, so there's your quarter, there's half, one, one and a half, and you can actually adjust this while the mower's running, if you get it running. There's a little slit you can get through to adjust that. But just so you've seen it on video, I've actually uh, put that back in, and I've put this little uh, gasket back on the top of here as well. Right, let's take this mower outside and just give this a quick try. Right, I'm going to try this. I have to excuse my clothes, I've been decorating this morning. I haven't got changed, so not that it really matters, does it, when you're doing something like this? But um, one thing I saw on the internet was a guy who tipped it towards the spark to get some fuel going, and he said it made it a one start, one pull wonder. I don't think that's going to happen to you. So.
fantastic. What a fantastic result. The biggest problem I've got with this lawnmower now is how to get it to stop. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, it's still running out there. I'm well chuffed with that. I can't believe that um, that's running like that. Got a bit more work to do with the handle and get the throttle lever set up. And one problem with these mowers really is that, um, sorry, just turn it tumble dryer off. One, one problem with the mower is once they start and they're warm, the choke closes again. And obviously you don't want to try and start a lawnmower with the choke closed, but it's just um, the downside of the chokematic system. So we'll go outside and we'll have another quick look around this because I'm well happy with that result to be honest with you. And as I've said, I haven't got to go underneath now and sharpen the blade. I've just got a little bit of tweaking to do and um, put the handles back on, get the cable working, just maybe tweak the carb a little bit, get it running a little bit uh, quicker and slower, things like that. So let's take a look outside, just see this mower that's still running. Just remember to turn this tumble dryer back on. I'll be in trouble. I'm well excited. Brilliant that. Right, so the next job I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put the handle back on and connect up the actual throttle cable as well. I'm still not convinced those springs are working as they should and everything's moving quite as it should. So I think when I get the handle back on and the cable, I can move things about. I can work out what's moving and what's not moving and what needs to be changed. And we can get that set up. But it was fantastic to see that mower running. There's actually a little um, tag on the back. I'll show you now. Let's um, try get something. Excuse my camera work. It says something on here, if anybody knows, I think I showed this at the beginning, it says, um, I think it says 82110, so I think I said earlier, I think it's from 1982, but I'm going to have a play about with these springs here, and put the cable back through here, put the handle back on, and we'll see what moves what, and if everything looks like it's moving in the right place, and as I was saying outside, the, the chocomatic carb, the problem with this mower is, once you've started it up, it's designed to be staying run until you've finished cutting the grass. There's no kind of dead man's handle on it for stopping it and starting it again while you're up to the actual grass box. So once it stops, the, obviously the choke goes back to the fully closed position and it's really difficult to start this again until the engine's gone cold. And I guess that's kind of the design fault that they've um, upgraded on the newer Briggs Classic engines. So this is a, a very old style of one of these now and you don't see that very often but the reason it was difficult to start up again is because this actual choke closes I think I did it off camera I just actually opened this put this in like this and started it up and it started up again absolutely fine so uh, a really really good result I'm, I'm really pleased to see that running it was great to see that fire up it really was so let's get the handle back on let's get the throttle set up we'll get this put back together I didn't actually have all the bolts in the, the starter recoil so sometimes it was missing as well it won't quite catch him and I think that's due to do with um, that and also the, the, the knot I've not hidden particularly well in there so we'll do a few things with that we'll put it back together and if this all works exactly as it should we'll give this more a bit of a clean up I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this I might even just keep it for myself really I've just had a bit of bad luck I've just lifted this back on the bench and out of habit pull the spark plug lead off you can see here, this rusty band around here on this brand new spark plug and unfortunately for me this has actually snapped from the inside of this and this is one piece that runs right into this ignition coil so I'm going to have to swap this coil over, I'm not going to film all that but I am going to have to swap this over and um, just set all this up again, I'll do that, I'm not going to film any of that, just been a bit unlucky but I think if you remember back if, earlier on in this video I actually said to check in the side of here, make sure things looked correct because when you push this on it kind of feels not too bad and it could easily catch you out so 
I said in the video earlier, make sure you check in here, and these are the reasons why. So I'm going to swap the coil over, I'm going to put the handle on, have a play with these springs again. Right, it's time for a bit of honesty. I um, went to get the actual coil off, and it's different because it does go in underneath here. I think it probably does go to some points, actually under there, one of the wires does. One goes to the switch, and I don't have another coil as all that wire. So what I've had to do is I've had to... I'm not proud of this. I've had to strip down this cable and I've actually found the car of the cable, wrapped it around the plug and then I've actually just kind of put the, uh, the rubber bung over the top and cable tied it. So it's not going to come off. I'm still going to get spark but it's not, a, it's not a repair I'm proud of to be honest with you. But um, it's as much time as I want to invest in this just to, to make this video to be honest. But a little bit of honesty there. And I've also had a play about with this spring here. I've actually put a different spring on here. Again, not the best repair but I've made sure it's secure. I made sure all this is getting a bit more of a, a good pull back to hopefully get this speed set. I'm still concerned that this is actually too far away, but that's the only way it can actually go with the linkage set up correctly. So I've got that, and I'm, 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 I keep doing that because I want to really demonstrate that it, it does pull back, which is what I want it to do. So I'm going to get the recall cover on and leave it on this time. I wanted to um, show you these bits I've been doing off camera. And basically I've just hooked a normal governor spring around there. But as long as it opens and closes and it has a not too much tension, just to, enough to move it about when the engine's running, it should hold um, a nice balance. So I'm going to put this recall cover on for the last time and bolt it on, then put the handle on. Right, it's absolutely pouring down again, but my camera's staying in the garage, so I'm just going to um, give this a bit of a retest, see if I can get this started again. Um, the spark plug um, lead repaired it really works. I've just got that touching on the plug at the minute but I want to make sure this starts and the, the springs are actually doing what they're supposed to do Right, so I've just had a go at adjusting that. Obviously there's a point where I uh, kind of purposely made it cut out, but I think there's just a bit too much spring tension on these, but 
it's just a case of fiddling around a little bit and I can tweak all this once I've got the handle back on but basically I can get this started and get it running and um, I'm not too sure I think the engine might have still been a little bit warm which is why I had to open the actual carb up as well a bit on the choke so I'm reasonably happy with that I'm happy it runs again now even though I've had to kind of just temporarily run it like this but I can put the handle back on and I can try and set this up right I wasn't actually going to film this bit so I was just sort of putting the handle back on and tinkering about but you can tell I've got different springs on and all sorts so what I've got to do is work out exactly where this cable is supposed to go and I want to show you this on the handle first so this has got a throttle cable on here you can see obviously this moves about and when I'm moving this about this moves the actual position of, of this here for anybody who's not seen this so at the slowest position here right at the top I'm going to leave that right at the top and at that position really I want this to be kind of almost like the springs are kind of not doing anything so I'm going to set that there and to set this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten it up I'm going to use this little mechanism here that I took off earlier this in my pocket I found it a minute ago I'm going to set that so the springs are slack so that when you tighten it up the springs get longer and I am going to um, I am going to finish these springs off by the way and make them properly at the end but I just want to get this set up first and make sure that um, the throttle actually works so that's what I'm doing at the minute is I'm going to tighten this up here and I'm going to try and see exactly what moves about when I take this all the way from the, the stop to this uh, hair running up here to the fastest setting right so hopefully you can see I'll just talk you through this this is uh, my camera screen's really wet actually but that's on the stop setting that's on the full setting so obviously tension in the spring all the way from stop and even past stop open as far as that so that's stop and then if I pull it even further towards me it collapses a little bit more I don't really want the spring to collapse to be honest so I'm going to have a little bit more of a play about with that and this is just trial and error really I mean I can't pretend I'm an expert at this but this is basically how the whole thing functions so I'm going to do that let's just take that a little bit more like that so at least the spring isn't kind of folding up on itself let's tighten that up again let's try that you've got to remember as well that this is a it's an old lawnmower this so that's all the way on full but I can't actually open it up full without nearly snapping the spring so I'm going to have to take it back to where I was and if you look actually here I'm not sure if you can see it's kind of an indentation in the actual cable where it was before so I'm going to take that back to here and I'm going to settle about there with this and hopefully it will be somewhere near so that's as good as I'm going to get it for now I'm going to go and test this in a second so at least on the throttle cable I can go all the way from the bottom here up to the top right up to the the, the furthest point and that's all I really want everything moving like that that looks a lot better actually so I'm going to take this outside again I'm going to try the cable and um, what normally happens is that everything just runs really fast but it's just a case of tweaking it I don't need to film every little thing on that but I wanted to just show you basically how you can set your throttle cable in a kind of a, a rough and ready version really
there we go I'm still not particularly happy with this spring across here you can see it keeps collapsing I'm actually going to put the other spring back on you get the general idea of um, how to set this and at least I can stop this mower running now when it goes to the actual stop sign on the handle so that's great I'm uh, say I'm not happy with this spring it's not correct it's collapsing too far so this is all stuff I can do um, off camera really just to get this running a little bit better but I hope you get the general idea of the things I kind of mess about with just to get these things up and running and if you were wondering just how old this lawnmower is take a look at this air filter look at that have you ever seen anything like that it's totally gone this tells you it's been stood on a long 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 time so I'm going to take that out of there that's horrible so this is it this is um, the end of the Hater Harrier that's still annoying me it's not perfect but it's given me something to do while we're still in this horrible lockdown situation and even though it's been a, bit, a long slog at times I hope it's given you something to watch and entertain you as well along the way so we'll give this one quick fire up again this is going to go away and I'm probably just going to take this down to my local allotment and just ask them if they want this and give this one away just to try and help a few people out so that's all if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so I really do appreciate that and I always like to read the comments in the comments sections as well so please leave me a comment and I really do hope this has um, helped you pass an hour or so thanks for watching